Welcome back everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking and in this series we are rebuilding popular user interfaces in Swift UI. And so far we have rebuilt Spotify, we've rebuilt Bumble, and now we're rebuilding Netflix. And this is the fourth video in the Netflix section. So if you missed the first three videos, check those out. They lead up to this one. They're available for free on the channel in this playlist. In this video, we're gonna to start to build the second screen in our Netflix app. We're gonna talk about how we can create some reusable components. I again, am gonna challenge you guys to try to build these without me. And then again, we're gonna compare notes. I hope this method of comparing notes is starting to help some of you guys actually get the confidence to build these yourselves. If it is helping at all, let me know in the comments below so I know to keep doing it. Feel free to also let me know if it is not helping or it's just a waste of time so that I can stop saying it in all of these videos. All right, without further ado, let's jump into Xcode and write some code. Welcome back, everybody. We are building Netflix and it's looking cool so far. This is what we built so far, but now we're gonna deal with the cool animations on the navigation bar. So if I look at the final product here, we have this animation. So if I scroll up, the categories kind of fade away. And if I scroll up high enough, the actual navigation bar renders, renders a background that's a little bit transparent, got a material effect on it, and it looks really nice. Firstly, we need to get the scroll view offset. So when we actually move the scroll view, we need to track that. Then we need to hide the categories. Then we need to add the background. Let's get going here. So I'm purposely trying to do a bunch of different methods for different things in this series. That's why I've strategically picked screens that appear different. When we were doing the Spotify detail view, what do we call it? The Spotify playlist view. We took, we put a, the top cell in the scroll view, and then we added a geometry reader to read the frame of the top cell in the scroll view. And this is how we did it. We had a scroll view with a V stack. And then on the first cell, we added a modifier to get the frame of the top cell. We're going to do it slightly different in this video, because I actually have a component in the Swiftful UI framework that actually reads that for us automatically. So we don't have to deal with it ourselves. So what we're going to do is actually, when we have the scroll view that we're in right now, we're going to instead use a scroll view with, with on scroll changed. So when the scroll changes, we're going to get this closure here that will tell us the offset of the scroll view. So this is just a convenience thing that I've built to basically put a geometry reader at the top of the scroll view. So we're going to do that. Let's triple click it. Control M. Let's go with a vertical scroll view. Show indicators is false. The content. I'm going to open the brackets and click enter here. I'm going to open the brackets. This will be offset in and press enter. So I'm going to take the same content that we had here, put it as the content in this component, and then we can delete this old other scroll view. And now we get this on scroll changed. Let's start by tracking it. So at the top of the screen here, I'm going to go at state private var. Let's call this scroll view offset of type CG float because we're just going to track the vertical scroll. We don't need it as a size and we'll set it equal to zero to start. And we're going to set the scroll view offset equal to the offset dot Y. And just to see that let's put on the screen here, let's put a text that just has the actual offset. We'll do offset here or sorry, scroll view offset. Let's give that a foreground style of red so that we can see it. Cool. It's zero right now. And as I scroll, it goes negative the amount that I'm scrolling. Cool. Super easy to get that number. And now we can do some animations based on this number. So, so firstly, let's move up as I move up and I move up somewhere around here. I actually want the categories to then go in and hide. So we saw here, the categories kind of bump up. So let's find those categories quick. It's the Netflix filter bar. And let's just say, let's give it a number here. Let's say if the number is maybe 15, I think 15 pixels is good. So if I scroll it up just a little bit, the categories will, will dip away or maybe 20, we'll do 20. So if the scroll view offset is greater than negative 20, draw it on the screen. So when it's zero, 
and greater, we'll have it on the screen. And if it's less than negative 20, it should not render. So let's put the filter bar on the screen here. Move up. And when we scroll up, and it looks like it's mostly working, we can see a little bit of a jolt in the scroll view as we do this. And the reason is, if you remember two videos back, we added a little bit of logic to get the header size. And then we put a fake cell at the top of the scroll view that was the exact header size. So we put that here, a rectangle, we just had the exact header size. So if I wasn't tracking that header size, I can see that it actually animates a little bit more smoothly. The scroll view itself is not jumping. The, the, nav, the nav bar is jumping, but the scroll view is not. So here again, the scroll view is now going to jump as well as the nav bar, which I don't like. So really, we don't want when the header changes sizes, we don't want this cell to also change sizes. And really what it is, is we actually don't want to keep reading the frame of the header size. We want to get the first size and then just keep that as a constant for the remainder of the view. So here we're just going to say, if the full header size is equal to zero, so if it's not set yet and it's zero, then we'll set it. But once it's equal, once we set it once, we will not set it twice. So now just the header is offsetting, looks a little bit better. Let's add in a little bit of animation for this so that the, when it moves, it looks nicer. On this, I'm gonna add a transition. Let's do a move on the top edge. And I think we need to add animation as well. Let's go down here. We'll add animation of smooth for the scroll view offset. Cool, off the top edge. I also want it to kind of fade into the background. So let's combine this transition. We're going to go this transition combined with the opacity transition. So now it's going to fade out on the top. That looks really nice. Next, let's deal with the background color. So we can see here that fades. And then as I keep scrolling, the background comes in on the nav bar there. And it's like a nice material color, right? It's not the blue that we have. So where I have this background color dot blue, let's actually add, before we do the background, let's make the blue extend to the bottom a little bit further. So let's add some padding here of maybe bottom of eight. Just get a little extra border on the bottom there. And then here, let's just create some logic. We'll say a Z stack. And if the scroll view is less than somewhere around here, let's go maybe 60, 65, 70, 70 looks good. Let's go if the scroll view offset is less than negative 70. Then let's draw on the screen. Let's do a rectangle and we're just going to fill it with color dot blue. All right. So as I scroll that should offset and then this comes onto the screen. Let's ignore the safe area again so that we can uh, go all the way to the top of the screen. Beautiful looking better. And now I want to make this an actual, a material color. So the reason I'm using a rectangle here and not just adding a color dot blue is because I want to actually add a background onto this object with the ultra thin material. So these materials are like the kind of like the transparent materials that Apple is pushing. So let's fill this with color dot clear so we can't actually see the rectangle. And then there's a background on the rectangle that has the thin material. And that looks a little bit better. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So maybe we'll give this a brightness of negative 0.2, 20%. And that looks better as well. Let's scroll up. We got the, the categories hiding, the material background coming in, and it, you can even see the kind of the images through the background. I really like that UI there. That looks nice. I'm noticing that all these rows have the same cells. So maybe when we create these rows, we should just call products.shuffled. Uh, just so that they look a little bit different on each row. The last thing is on this, we have this background color and the background color also kind of animates off the screen as you scroll. We have a, we have a couple layers to our code here. We have the background layer, which is the background black. We have the scroll view. And then on top of that, we have the header view here. Uh, let's clean this up a little bit. I'm going to cut the entire header I'm gonna cut it. Go down to where the header is, and I'm just going to call this a private var. Let's say full header with filters. So with the filter row, some view, paste that in here. 
I'll put the full header, full, full header here. And then here, I'm going to cut this and I'm going to come down to the bottom somewhere around my categories row and I'll do private var scroll view. It's called scroll, scroll view layer of type some view. Paste that in. Again, we don't need to break this up into some view, but I really like when I can get a really clean view of what's going on in this screen. And we can see here, this is super easy to work with now. All right, so between the background layer and the scroll view layer, I'm gonna add another layer here. So let's make it a Z stack. And I'm gonna start with some linear gradients. So a linear gradient, let's add some colors. I'm gonna go, let's go red to blue. Let's go from top to bottom. All right, we can see the gradient. Let's ignore the safe area. So we can see the full gradient here and let's give this a frame. So I'm gonna give us a frame with a max height of 400. Cool. It looks a little bit better. So we're going to animate it. So obviously it's going to be from like one color down to a clear color. So it won't have this car hard line here, but I don't want it to be the entire screen. I just want it to be on the top half of the screen. So that's why we're going to give it a max height of 400. As I scroll, I actually want the frame of that background layer to get a little bit smaller. So what we're going to do is basically, it's going to look like it's moving up on the screen because the height is going to go from 400 to 300 to 200, and it's going to get a little bit less. So the scroll view offset again is a negative number. So negative 80. And so let's do 400 plus the negative number, which is the scroll view offset. So now it should move with the scroll view. I don't want it to move the exact speed as the scroll view. It, it looks nice, but I want the scroll to actually happen faster than the background is changing. So we're going to do here is multiply this. We're going to go by may, times maybe 0.75%. So the offset will get smaller at a rate of 75% of the actual scroll. So now we can see here that it moves up, but slightly slower than the actual scroll view offset. And then by scroll down, I actually don't want it to go any further than the current spot it's located at. So let's go here. And, and while I'm building this, I'm recognizing that if I go way too far, right, this max height will eventually become a negative number, right? So 400, let's say the scroll view offset times 0.75 ends up being greater than 400. This would be 400 plus negative 500. So the max height will be negative 100. And we don't want that. So we'll take this and we're going to wrap it in parentheses. And we're going to say we want the maximum of let's just say 10 as the smallest number and this number here so now it will go off but it should never get below the size of 10. cool i also want to animate the uh, the opacity of that so once this hits a certain amount if i get high enough i want it to just hide the background layer so you can see here that as we move up it's red 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 and then eventually i go high enough it just goes away Let's also add on here a dot opacity. And let's say if the scroll view offset is less than maybe negative 150, make it zero, otherwise one. So let's go down to negative 150 and it will animate off the screen. I think not enough. Let's go maybe 250 and let's add animation to that. So we'll go animation dot ease in out and we'll do on change of scroll view offset. Let's fix the colors before we move on here. So what I'm going to do is actually two different gradients to really get a nice color here. On the, the top here, we're going to make this. Let's go from Netflix dark gray. Let's go opacity of one at the top. Down to Netflix dark gray, opacity of zero at the bottom. That looks good. And I'm going to copy that with the ignore safe area. Add another one. So we'll do two different layers here. This one will be the Netflix dark red and we're going to copy and paste that twice. And then the red is maybe too red here. So let's draw an opacity of 0 0.5 for the hard edge. And that looks better. Again, the reason I'm doing two different gradients here is because I want, I want it to be basically a red gradient, but I want it to be able to bleed through and have a little bit of a gray in the red. So we can see here that the red is kind of bleeding into the gray, into the black. And I think that looks pretty good. Awesome. Check that out, guys. We built a really cool animation here. You can, the, the, the category bar 
is clickable. It's got this awesome animation to it. The, when we scroll up, it goes away. The background gradient starts to move. The material nav bar comes in, and this is starting to look really professional. The last thing I want to throw out here is that when I scroll down, I actually don't want any of that animation to occur. I don't care about scrolling past the top. I only care about scrolling up. And so when I scroll down, I can see that the number at the bottom is going positive. And when I scroll up, the number is going negative. So when I look at the scroll view layer here, the offset, let's just only update this screen to be the offset. Let's do the minimum of zero or the negative number coming from through this. So this way, we're never going to change the number. When we go down, we'll only change it when we go up. So our animations are nice and smooth. Last but not least, let's just cut this gradient layer. And we're just going to call this the, let's put it up here, private var background gradient, gradient layer. Some view, paste this in, put this back up here. And this is such a clean little, such clean code up here. I really love, like if another engineer were to say, Hey, can you edit this? I can come into this screen. I can look at this and I can say, wow. All right. We have a background layer, which you probably can't see, but I can very easily just go color.blue to see what I'm working with. Awesome. All right. Now I know blue is on the background. Let's undo that. If I get rid of the gradient layer, what is that going to do? All right. That must be the gradient layer. If I get rid of the scroll view layer, what's that going to do? All right. So all that content must be in the scroll view layer. And if I'm trying to deal with the header, what is that part? Well, that's just the top part there. Okay. So all that code must be inside the scroll view header. Cool. Let's get rid of this number because we don't need it. Where, where did we put it? I don't even remember. Delete. In the next screen, in the next video, we are going to start building the next screen, which looks like this. And that's going to be a lot of fun. It's got some micro animations that we're going to build. And then we're going to wrap up Netflix. Thank you all for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.